Hello, my friends. God bless you by opening your understanding to understand His Word and to put it into practice above all. It's pointless to know the Word of God and not practice it. And I was speaking yesterday in regards to people who are jealous of one and the other as the case of the prophet, the man of God called Asaph. He was jealous, though being a man of God, he was envious of the wicked because they prospered. So this plague of envy happens because of people not looking to themselves evaluating their own communion with God. They're conscious and looking to themselves. They keep looking to others. And that is why we have many believers and unbelievers who are the same. There's no difference. Lord, forgive me. But the truth is the following. Jesus said the following. This is very glorious because it's within the context which we spoke yesterday. Jesus said, This is the care which he left and has towards each of us. He says, No one can serve two masters. You know this. Everyone knows this. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Meaning, there is no way to divide ourselves between serving God and serving the God of money, the God of this world, mammon. This everyone knows. But what few people know, very few people know, is that Jesus, shortly after, in the following verse, he says, Therefore, therefore I say to you, therefore I say to you, meaning, we should not look to serve the Greeks, the gods, the devil, or God and the world. That's why he says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Because he who keeps looking to the lives of others, it is because he is seeking to copy or criticize or etc. He is trying to find a motive, a reason to console himself with his problems. However, when the other person is well, he is jealous. When the other person is bad, he dis is not well, he despises. Then he says, well, at least I'm better than those other people. But he starts to compare he starts to weigh according to the other person. And Jesus says, That is why we should not try to serve God and mammon. There's no way to serve riches and to serve God. There is no way. Either one or the other will be pleased by us. That is why Jesus says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about your life. This is for those who are truthfully of God. He is speaking here to the servants of God. He is speaking to His disciples. He is speaking to the people who wanted to follow and serve Him. He is not speaking to the Jews. He is not speaking to the Pharisees, the hypocrites. No, He wasn't talking to these people. He wasn't criticizing anyone. He was teaching 
the lifestyle which we Christians need to adopt in our lives. We should not look to anyone. The prophet Asaph kept looking. Yes, he's a prophet, a man of God. He was looking to others. That is why he almost fell. Because he was jealous. The word of God is magnificent. The word of our Lord Jesus. Now see. Do not worry about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink. Nor about your body what you will put on. Is it not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Now he starts to speak about the birds, the flower, nature. Today it exists and tomorrow is being burned. So, Jesus teaches us not to worry. in regards to what we will eat, what we will drink, or what we will put on. Now imagine, now looking to other people, to keep observing the lives of others. If he does not allow us to worry about something we need to eat every day, every day we need to eat, every day we need to take a bath, every day we need to put on clothes, we need to work and fulfill our obligations. He told us not to worry about our needs. So much more to worry about the lives of others. This is the biggest problem of those who have a faith which does not match or work with intelligence. It's a foolish faith. Let me say it straight in clear English because it's pointless for me to keep making up words. Faith which God gives us, my friend, is the most precious thing which any of us could have. Just for you to understand something small. When a person has a faith with intelligence, they use it with reason, with their heads, their face, their face shines. It has a different shine, a different glow, different beauty. They don't need makeup. They don't need to do plastic surgery because everything is perfect in their eyes because they have the Spirit of God. They have the Word of God. That person is not bothered with the others. He's not worried with what the others are doing or not doing, saying or not saying. That person worries in pleasing God. So when their faith is intelligent, we do not live in anxieties, in worries. Now look at what he says. He speaks of the needs which in no way should we worry about. He says, there at the end, in verse 33, he says, but seek first the kingdom of God. When a person does not enter the kingdom of God, when they're not in the kingdom of God, they are anxious, they are easily angered. They are that person who one moment is serving God, trying to serve God and serving themselves at the same time or serving mammon. It is that type of person who lacks balance, does not have balance at all because that person is not in the kingdom of God. They're in the kingdom of the world. The kingdom of the world is in hell. It is deep in hell, in hell, literally in hell. So people's shame do not know that they're in hell, that they're going down hell each moment, each instant, and the others are entering hell. Why? Because they did not enter the kingdom of God. And they did not enter the kingdom of God because they did not hear nor give attention to the word of God. And they did not give attention to the word of God because they kept giving attention 
to the small talk of others. They keep giving attention to the cheap talk of the neighbor, of the other neighbor. They keep giving attention to social media, what so-and-so said. They keep giving attention to musicians, to sports celebrities, people who are completely lost, people who are killing themselves because of depression. Why? Because these people are trying to serve mammon and serving mammon, having the world at their feet, but they cannot live their daily life because they took possession of everything and they verified that they had nothing. Even having everything, they have nothing because they're empty. They are hollow because they did not give ears to the Word of God. They don't give ears to the Word of God. They give ears to everyone but the Word of God. And that is why they are like this depressed. A life of a man, Jesus said, does not consist of the material goods, the bags, the shoes, and their dressing. No. People who have a lot of money do not know what to do with their money. They keep buying, 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 thinking that they will satisfy the intimate the interior, and they think it will fill it up, but no, it won't. But each day they are more hollow, and they can't bear the situation and end up killing themselves, because when, truthfully, when you don't enter the kingdom of God, when you do not subject to the King, God, the Lord Jesus, when they don't have the Spirit of the Lord Jesus, that person is hollow, empty, frustrated. He conquers, 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 conquers and reaches a point that he said, what's the point of all of this? Why all of this? If inside of me there is a hole, there is a huge sadness. If inside of me there is a conflict which I cannot have peace. I don't have peace. Unfortunately, this is the humanity which we see. That's the humanity. Sad. Jesus said, but seek first the kingdom of God, meaning worry with the kingdom of God. When a person is worried with their lives, it's because they did not enter the kingdom of God. When a person is worried in pleasing themselves, he's not worried with the kingdom of God. He is not worried in being of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, my friend, is given in us when we allow the King, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God to come and reign in our lives. And when He reigns, then we have the mind to think. We have the feelings to feel. We have the body which will be taken care of according to the will of God. He will control everything. He will give us all the guidance. He will make us blessed. We will live a piece of heaven here on earth, not on the streets, but at home with the family, with the children, or without children, with the husband, the wife, and live a different life. So he says, but seek first the kingdom of God. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Righteousness, meaning when you, the king, when rather the king the Lord Jesus Christ comes upon a person and starts to live in them, 
that person automatically starts to live in his righteousness, starts molding his life according to the rules, the laws, the commandments of the Word of God. The commandments, the laws of God, which is order and discipline, which is respect, consideration, putting the Lord in first place of our lives. Meaning, when a person starts to live in this context, then he says, He guarantees this. And all these things shall be added to you. What do you need? Food. It won't lack. Do you need clothes? It won't lack. Do you need a house? It won't lack. Do you need a job? It won't lack. Do you need money? It won't lack. Why? Because you are subject to the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God, or rather the king of the kingdom of God, has the obligation to take care of us. He becomes our care, our protector, our Lord. Do you think that our Lord will allow His servants to go in need? Do you think that the Lord, Jesus Christ, will allow that He who serves Him will go in need? will be weakened, unbalanced. No. The Lord guides His servants. He guides His servants. Because He guarantees. He says, You shall again discern the difference between the righteous and the wicked the cruel, the wicked, the evil, between those who serve me and those who do not serve me. There needs to be this difference, my friend. It's written here in the Bible. You can read this in the sacred scriptures. I'll leave it here written, registered on Instagram for you to read and read various times until you understand. I was speaking a bishop to a bishop here of Eastern Europe and he said to me, Bishop, here in Russia, here in Romania, he said here in Romania, there was a woman who read your book, The Holy Spirit, 15 times. Do you believe this? She read it 15 times. And even being translated to her language, she didn't understand it the first, the second, the third. She did not understand on the fourth attempt. When she finished reading it for the fifteenth time, she received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Do you know why she received the baptism with the Holy Spirit? It's not because she read my book simply. But it's because she was so perseverant that she wanted to know what she needed to do to receive the Holy Spirit, she read it 15 times. The same book. I never heard of this in my life. The first time which I hear that a person read the book 15 times, thirsty to know how she could receive the Holy Spirit. And for the 15th time, she received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Meaning God saw the interest. God saw her dedication. God saw her thirst in wanting to receive the Holy Spirit. So, He came to meet her needs because she manifested her thirst of serving Him. So, these are people who start to live in the kingdom of God and live a different life from others who say they believe but don't believe a single thing. That's the reality, my friend. Unfortunately, I know that I'm so 
rough and tough to speak, but our objective is to awaken you from the sleep of death, the sleep of your burial. That's the reality. For you to look to yourself, instead of worrying with others who are suffering problems, each one has his own problems. Instead of you looking at social media worried what so-and-so said or did not say, let it be. Take care of your life, my friend. Your life is one, isn't it? So it's pointless for you to share the little which you have with the problems of other people whom you are absorbing in the literature, in the form of dressing and being and having things. Don't keep looking to others. Look at yourself. Evaluate your faith. Because if you are not well, you have faith in Jesus, you know the Bible. And if you're not well, it's because the Spirit of God is lacking in, inside of you, to reign inside of you. And that is why your life does not develop. That is why you are frustrated, disappointed, lost, like a confused cockroach. You don't know what to do. You live in doubt, in worries. And Jesus said more. Concluding chapter 6 of Matthew, he says, Therefore do not worry. Therefore do not worry. We already have a lot of problems. Each one of us have a lot of problems to solve. And how can we be worried with the lives of others looking at their lives? Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So enough already is the evil we need to face each day. Now imagine to keep looking and absorbing and drinking from feelings of envy or any other thing. That is why many people fall into sin because they keep looking to the lives of others. Asaph almost looked, almost fell, almost stumbled because he was observing with envy of the lives of those who are wicked and those who are prospering. If you are serving God, so maintain yourself firm and strong in this faith. Look ahead. Faith leads us to look ahead. Faith does not let us look to the side or the other. Faith leads us ahead. What has passed us past, it's done. Let us look ahead. We call this faith, intelligent faith. And if you keep observing the lives of others, what they have or do not have, or what you would like to have, like the others, you are worried how you will eat, how you will dress, if you're anxious, with your own life and you end up losing your life and life goes by fast you lose your life and lose even the salvation of your soul so look to yourself take care of yourself that you may not fall in the temptation that you may not drown in faith even with the faith which you have you have faith to heal to be healed you have faith to have your family restored, you have faith to gain money, you have faith for everything, but you don't have faith to take care of your own faith, to take care of your own life, the interior, your relationship with God. 
the Bible says, let your conscience be the judge of your faith, we can say. More or less in these terms in which I'm saying. I'm not reading the exact scripture, but it's more or less this. My conscience is the judge of my faith in God. If my conscience is bad, if my conscience is contaminated, it's because there is something wrong in my life. There is a sin. I carry a sin. That's the reality. But if my good conscience, if my good conscience is well, it's clean, pure, then I'm happy. Because I know that God is pleased with this useless servant. So take care of your own life, your own conscience, your own faith. So that you may maintain yourself in faith and receive the crown of life. Because to maintain in faith, we need to live by faith and from faith to faith, trusting that God will fulfill all our needs. He will not let us lack a thing. This is the faith of the New Testament, the faith which leads us to a life tranquil, firm, founded on the word which does not return void. God bless you till tomorrow. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.